Good afternoon. Welcome all to this presentation of the FRIDA Call 2022 Opportunities for Funding Technical Projects. So first of all, I'd like to start by telling you briefly what FRIDA is. It's a LACNIC program to su provide support to projects, initiatives, and solutions in Latin America and the Caribbean aimed at strengthening the internet at a regional level and also the consolidation of a global, stable, open, and secure um, uh, internet. Ever since uh, it was uh, created in 2004, FRIDA has uh, developed uh, 114 projects, seven scale-ups of projects uh, with grants, and uh, 47 prizes. And throughout history, it's had different partners, but at present, it's exclusively funded by LACNIC and coordinated only by LACNIC. The call usually is done through an annual open call publicly coordinated by LACNIC, but under the guideline of a jury, an external jury, uh, expert in the different themes and the access that are defined every year for the call. FRIDA has two modalities through, with different supports. On the one hand, we have the grants uh, for projects to fund project solutions and initiatives. They provide funding from $10,000 to $40,000, as well as technical support and monitor for monitoring throughout the project. And on the other hand, we have the prices. The prices are to distinguish projects that are already underway or completed, uh, recognizing them with a $10,000 price. Frida is uh, has uh, uh, targets different cat categories. Uh, on the one hand, multiple organizations can apply, such as operators, IXPs, NOGs, and other actors, um, uh, universities, research centers, uh, working groups, experts, associations, and uh, civil society entities, as well as government or public entities, and finally, private entities or companies. Now, an important comment is that it is not necessary to have uh, to be a legal person to apply. Initially, working groups uh, could also uh, apply to FRIDA. And if the project is selected in that case, you will be required to associate to an an organization that it has a legal person so that you can uh, manage the funds. As to one of the key themes of the call, we need to approach the thematic access defined for 2022. Specifically, this year, there are three categories, stability and security of the internet, connectivity and access to the internet, and uh, open and free internet. Each of these categories has different objectives. In the case of the first, the aim is to promote the stability and security of the internet through four key axes related to cybersecurity and resilience of the internet, interconnection and network uh, operation, and a subcategory that I'll describe later on. Second, connectivity and access to the internet seeks to favor connectivity, the quality of access, and also to uh, enhance, to use strategies to enhance uh, the, uh, um, the service providers of regional internet. In the case of open and free internet, the idea is to support uh, projects that, uh, uh, to projects approaching current um, uh, challenges in Latin America and the Caribbean related to the internet and human rights, as well as digital inclusion at a regional level. 
So as I said earlier, each category has different axes. In the case of stability and security, there are four. And in this case, there is a, sub, a specific subcategory integrated this year related to the use and the application of blockchain for the stability and security of the internet. This subcategory, given that it approaches a theme that is recent both in research uh, at an academic and a practical level. It targets research projects. You can have case studies or developing prototypes or proofs of concept. And the essential thing in the case of the use and application of blockchain is that results must contribute to a practical solution and concrete solution, or they could also generate knowledge to promote the development of the theme in the region. In the case of connectivity and access to the internet, there are three axes, connectivity to the internet, access to a quality service and strategies to um, uh, and, uh, improve the ISPs. Each one is different. In the case of connectivity to the internet, the idea is to give provide fundings to projects that uh, provide connectivity in America, areas of Latin America and the Caribbean that currently have no internet, either in rural areas or in urban areas with poor coverage. And in this case, the idea is to have alternative models of access, the de uh, development of affordable technologies, and reducing the technology gaps in general. Uh, as to the access of internet for a quality service, the idea, what we aim at, is not uh, connectivity per se uh, in areas where there isn't, to improve the uh, service. So in this case, we could have uh, projects, uh, promote projects, increasing existing connectivity, <laughs> either in terms of uh, speed or the scope of coverage or the capacity of the network. Also, measure, measurement and evaluation of uh, access, of the needs of access of certain, uh, different communities, so as to conduct uh, an initial uh, survey or probe to then offer concrete solutions, specific solutions. And there could also be other solutions related to these access. As to the strategies to improve the ISPs or to empower ISPs, um, this approach is focused on uh, the challenges of uh, internet service providers uh, at a regional level. The proposals uh, should um, uh, focus on uh, the purchase of, uh, of uh, equipment or needs or developing uh, business strategies or training or internal training or other needs that uh, may be detected. And finally, as to open and free internet, there are two specific access, internet and human rights and digital inclusion. In the first case, internet and human rights, it focuses on the challenges or needs related to human rights in areas such as freedom of expression, uh, privacy rights and uh, data protection, the, and uh, uh, the role of digital uh, technologies and uh, the emerging technologies and their impact on human rights. And with digital inclusion, we aim at projects approaching challenges or needs related to the digital divide in a multi-dimensional way from uh, competencies and uh, digital skills for education and the future work and the barriers that hinder the access to internet and affordability gaps, for instance, the cost of access to connection or devices. So how can you apply to FRIDA? There are two stages that we'll see later. In the initial uh, stage, First of all, you have to select uh, the thematic category associated with the project or the subcategory, uh, wherever appropriate. 
for instance, uh, blockchain for the stability and security of the internet, and to select the, themat the key thematic axis of the proposal. In some types of proposals, there, it could be the case that they could be associated to more than one thematic axis. In this case, it would depend on how the project was developed and to identify the type of support that you wish to postulate to. It could be a grant in the case of a project to be developed with a maximum duration of 12 months with a maximum amount of $40,000 or a prize in the case of an initiative that has been completed. With clear evidence and clear res results of impact or that is currently underway. The platform for applying you can access through programafrida.net, and in each category, um, you can register and uh, you can apply in general. The uh, stage one, that is the current one, as the call opened on uh, April 27, you you have an initial application that is very simple with general where you are asked for very simple things general data of the organizations that are applying a brief summary of uh, the project um, 500 words not more about the project and then specific fields related to the evaluation criteria in the next step, the projects that are pre-selected will be invited to present the complete proposal through the same platform. The criteria whereby the applications are considered have to do with the general requirements for the applications and also the assessment criteria. The general criteria are in general the relationship with the objective of the FRIDA program, which is to contribute to a global, open, stable, and secure internet and supporting projects that effectively contribute to strengthening internet in the region the belonging to one of the categories of beneficiaries, the location and development of the activities in Latin America and the Caribbean, particularly in territories that include LACNIX coverage area in one of the 13 territories. And this proposal should be focused on one of those territories. Fourthly, this application to one of the thematic categories and the relationship with the objective of that category, as well as of the selected thematic axis. And finally, the relationship with specific requirements, for, exa for example, in the case of the category for blockchain where case studies can be presented, proofs of concept and prototypes. This in addition to, for example, if a grant is associated to it and the amount applied for. Regarding the assessment criteria, these are subdivided into criteria of the first order. These are criteria that are weighted and evaluated, and the criteria of second order, which are positively valued. This implies that they are considered in qualitative terms. In the case of the first order criteria, the three macro criteria are relevance and applicability, impact and expected or obtained results obtained in the case of the awards, and continuity, sustainability, and replicability of the projects. In the case of each of these, it is not expected that the submitted proposals comply with all three specific criteria specified. But they, at least with some of these, and that this then is reflected in a guideline for the applicants. In the case of relevance and applicability, it is assessed whether this proposal is related to challenges or needs of the region. And if the development of the knowledge status 
has to do with the selected topic, if there is a consistency between the methodology, proposed activities, and the requested budget in the case of a grant, as well as the capacity of the technical team that proposes this, as well as the organization. In the case of the expected results, we assess different aspects. For example, the coverage of the target population, also whether the proposal and the project involve technical developments or material results from the technological standpoint, for example, development of prototypes, hardware or software, among others. If this involves the development of knowledge, for example, at practical level or academic level, in practical terms, for example, guidelines, methodologies, reports, among others, or at academic level. And in the case of continuity, sustainability, and replicability, whether this project has a potential of continuing once funding of FRIDA has concluded or not, if there are partnerships that were already developed, generated, or also planned. In addition to that, whether it has the potential of being replicated in different contexts. Finally, the second order criteria have to do with the innovative nature of the proposal, both in terms of a methodological approach, the solution or expected results, inclusion of the gender perspective, whether this project responds to issues related to the gender perspective in the ecosystem of the internet, and finally, the association to some of the sustainable development objectives. As I commented initially, the call is open for receiving applications. It was opened on the 27th of April. The deadline for submissions is May 31st. On the June the 30th, the pre-selected projects will be announced, who will then be invited to present the full proposal, and they have time until the 1st to the 15th of July 2022, and on August the 15th, the winning and projects will be announced, both those who receive grants or awards. If there are any questions regarding this call, please write to frida at lacnic.net or visiting the website programafrida.net where you can find the requirements and description for the applications, general requirements, as well as other details which I commented on during this presentation. And beyond Frida, LACNIC also has other opportunities of support, and I invite you to visit the site opportunities for support. There you have different programs. The calendar of initiatives also shows the moments in which each of these programs or initiatives is open. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions or comments. Thank you very much, Alicia. A big round of applause for Alicia. Now we open a Q&A section. If you have any questions on the FRIDA program, if you wish to ask Alessia any questions, please approach the microphone. And if there are remote questions, Clara Cremona will be asking the questions to Alex, Alessia. We have a question here in the room. Hi, good afternoon. I am the company Doble Click Software Ingenieria. More than a question, I'd like to, to tell us about a project that was developed in Colombia or in some neighboring area regarding uh, the FRIDA project. FRIDA, as I mentioned initially, has funded several projects. There have been some in Colombia. I cannot give you the information right now, but we can send it to you, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Clara, 
please let us know if there are any questions in the Q&A from remote participants. Clara, you cannot hear you. I apologize, Sandra, hello. No, there are no questions for the time being. Anyone else here in the room who wishes to ask Alessia any questions? Otherwise, thank you very much, Alessia, for your presentation.